Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation of the Arkansas GIS Users Forum Educational Webinar Series. Today's presentation will be the Community Maps Program presented by Shane Matthews, the Senior Product Engineer with Esri. My name is Chad and I'll be your host today. We're joined by a few of our Executive Committee panelists. Uh, look for them to post and answer questions throughout today's webinar. If at any time you have a question, please feel free to use the Q&A option at the bottom of your Zoom control screen. You can type that question at any time and all of your questions will be answered at the end of today's broadcast. Also feel free to use the chat function or the raise your hand option if you would actually like to join the conversation. So again, I'd like to introduce Shane Matthews, the Senior Product Engineer with Esri to present Community Maps Program. Shane, we'll turn things over to you. Hey, I appreciate it, Chad. Uh, judging from the intro here, you guys have, have done this before. <laughs> and I, uh, I love the, uh, I love the logo there on the on the device. That's great. Um, as everyone everyone can hear me and um, Chad, I'm going to share my screen. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, hey, uh, folks, thank you. Um, as Chad mentioned, um, my name is Shane Matthews, and I'm a senior product engineer. I've been with the Esri Community Maps program since it began. Um, Back in 2011, we were trying to figure it out. Um, prior to that, um, I was a, a production cartographer and product manager for National Geographic Maps. And so uh, production cartography, maps, um, all things geospatial really is kind of my wheelhouse for you know my entire career. I've made a living doing this somehow. And um, I want to appreciate um, you, you guys, all of you, for you know the interest today. Um, I've been doing a lot of um, lunch and learn sessions. Uh, some people call them. Um, I've done some things for the Central Ohio User Group uh, recently. Also, um, data managers throughout the the Greater Phoenix area, uh, local governments. Also, um, user groups in Iowa, including um, the folks at uh, University of Iowa and, and Ames State, the state college there, and also universities, college campuses um, all over the country and uh, and beyond. And so, um, these are great. These are great sessions. And so, um, I like to run it pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, tight here and, and informal. We're going to go over the community map program um, high level and uh, there's certainly an opportunity to continue the conversation um, into the future. If there's anything that you want to talk to me about specifically, uh, I'm always available. So I thought we would start by just talking about community maps versus the living atlas. Uh, there are some people who um, may not fully appreciate what that is. And so I think it's interesting and, and useful to uh, describe what that is. And so contributing to either community maps or the living atlas means that you are enriching the collection of maps and applications and data available through Esri's living atlas of the world. Uh, the process is different, however. When you contribute your authoritative data, you're asking the community map data curators, um, you know, part of my team, to include this data in Esri's base maps or other services like geocoding, perhaps, uh, so that other users can see your data uh, in Esri services and, and foundational things like base maps. When you contribute to the Living Atlas, uh, you're, you're nominating uh, your ArcGIS Online item, okay? Um, nominating an item means that you're asking the Living Atlas curators to review and accept uh, the, the item into the collection of the Living Atlas content so uh, that other users can discover that and, and use your content in their work. And so it's a, a collaborative effort either way, the data or nominating items. Uh, just a little bit of backstory about the program. 
uh, when Esri launched ArcGIS Online, we started with a public facing base map. Uh, we had a topo map and a streets map. Uh, these are different style files, same map. And then we had also, we had a world imagery service. And as soon as we went public with this stuff, um, we began hearing from users immediately. Um, and also people internal, uh, sales reps, uh, solution engineers across the country, uh, really all over the world. Uh, they were saying things like, um, hey, my city, we have a better building footprint and we have a parks layer and that you're not showing or it's incomplete. Um, or we'd hear things like our county has higher resolution and a more contemporary set of imagery than your world imagery uh, service is hosting and serving. Um, so as these conversations evolved, uh, the GIS community began suggesting that they share their map layers and imagery with us to better reflect their communities. Uh, they began asking us to host their map data online in order to improve Esri's foundational services because many of these folks, some of you, um, are using uh, these foundational services in their web maps. Or you're using them in your applications and you're incorporating accurate base maps. When you do that, uh, you're improving the information product um, that you create and also you're helping accomplish uh, your daily task work in GIS, having a useful uh, contemporary base map foundation. So, you know, we, we formalized it. We started getting things in, people were sending us things. So we created the community maps program as a formal method um, for better supporting our customers and, and users and really everyone, okay? So we're gonna step through the, the program a bit today and talk about it. Um, our sharing workflows have expanded a great deal uh, since uh, in the past 10 years. And what you're viewing now are the three ways in which um, you can share your local geographic knowledge with us, okay? So we'll start with the feedback. Um, and maybe we'll pop out of here just for some better viewing. Um, the feedback is really the simplest uh, way to tell us about incorrect or missing features, okay? Um, I wanna draw your attention down to these workflows. Uh, these, these will uh, show, show you what that workflow experience would look like uh, for any number of these uh, workflow choices. OK, this is something you can sort of uh, discover um, on your own um, as, as time goes on. But we'll touch on a few of them. Providing feedback is, is easy. Uh, there's no ArcGIS online login required. And you're using an editable, an editable public facing web app to give us feedback. And so I want to show you what this looks like. So this is uh, where an organization or really any casual user is able to uh, communicate uh, base map information errors with us. And this is the base map and geocoding feedback service. So if you scroll down, you can see that there are three services here that will support feedback. If you're seeing addresses that are if you're getting bad searches, uh, you can talk about that or maybe place names and the geocoding feedback, a bad address returns. You could um, interact with the geocoding curators here. And for us, um, base map feedback and imagery feedback um, is important. And so let me just launch this and we can have a look. It's very easy. Um, you simply draw a circle or a polygon or whatever around a feature that is questionable. It could be a park name that you think uh, it should be changed. There could be some old building information that's uh, changed. And so I'll zoom in here. All of these green um, polygons are representing uh, information that has been um, reviewed and has been corrected. And it's, it's a closed issue, okay? 
open issues um, are also in here as well. Um, let's see what we have going on in Arkansas here. We have someone who maybe this looks like a street. Let's see what this feedback is here. Go in one more here. Yeah. So this is the type of information that's useful for us. If there's any changes to road, right of ways, names, you know, badges, you know, whatever the case is, this is a very good way to um, get that information to us. We have a feedback um, lead who comes in every day and downloads all of the new open issues and begins to research these and they correct these. Uh, these corrections are done directly within the SDE that fuels the base map product. And so once that is corrected, we also persist that information to our authoritative data provider, um, our one of our commercial providers here. And so they're able to make these changes within their database as well. So a good side note here is to understand that wherever you're seeing uh, referential content that is not um, being contributed by a community or a local government, uh, shops like what, what you're in, uh, this information is coming from here. And so we, um, we clip out community information. That's the best. It's the most accurate. It's maintained. And it's coming directly from the authoritative source. And uh, although here is very good, um, they're not able to make changes and address uh, base map issues as quickly as you folks. So we take that very seriously. So um, back to this. Um, so, you know, providing feedback is a very good way for satisfying the onesies and twosies out there. Uh, you, you're seeing an error on, on a building footprint. Maybe you have a set of building footprints. Do you really want to share all those? Or do you just want to address what's wrong in the map? And so if you want to take that route, providing feedback is, is super quick, super easy, and very effective. And most of the time, uh, we will get that information into the base map um, much quicker than assessing a, a data set uh, from a, a local government. Editing features is also very, very good way, the fastest way to sort of get large scale features added to the base map. Okay, there is an ArcGIS Online organizational login required. This is one way that we can sort of vet the person. This is an open uh, source um, application. So uh, casual users, uh, people, GIS data managers alike are using this to add features to um, our maps. These features could represent data that they don't have in their assets. Um, these, these features could be uh, large scale features that you feel would be an improvement, uh, a better reflection of, of your community. And so we use, we use this editor app to create missing features or correcting errors, okay? I have the city of Yakima pulled up here because they have um, created a lot of interesting things. The city of Yakima has been sharing referential data sets with us and an imagery service uh, since the very beginning. Um, however, the city of Yakima did not have assets that included uh, K through 12 schools. They did not have the data for that. So they discovered this application and they also knew that this would be a great opportunity for an intern to come in and learn web pattern GIS and begin digitizing through the high resolution imagery that they supply every two years to begin digitizing some of the assets that they were keen on being able to, to better manage. This person came in and added 16,000 unique features to the base maps. All, all these uh, features you're seeing are within the, the, 
the base maps in ArcGIS Online now, okay? And so the way you do this is you're simply, this is, enables you to edit parts of our base maps to add detailed features for universities, schools, parks, um, landmarks, and other special areas of interest. And so all we ask is that you join the group. You will discover this group online. You request permission to join, and we don't turn anyone away. But we think that if you're an ArcGIS Online user with an account, then you're not the type of person who's going to introduce, um, I don't know, map vandalism or do something to the map that's inappropriate. Um, we haven't had anything like that happen. You know, that was a concern uh, for our team and also for Jack. Um, what are people going to do with, with these maps? What are they going to add? Um, but it's been going very well. And there's been, there's been no vandalizing. There's been no, um, you know, mistreatment of the base map. It's been a respectful um, effort. So um, I'm going to go in here to Arkansas because I saw some things earlier. I've noticed some things up here. So you do have people in a Springdale are registered contributors. So is Fayetteville. Um, and the way you go about this is you draw an AOI. You, you define an area of interest in which you're going to provide information for. And I saw some large scale, some parks down here. This may take a second to draw. I'm not going to go in any further. Give this a minute. But you do have folks for uh, this area who are feeling that they want to contribute uh, some information to these maps. And so um, this is how you go about doing that. You're using high resolution imagery to digitize uh, content. You can also bring in plans. Like if you're a university, you can bring in uh, different types of, of CAD plans that you can use to digitize from. You can also um, bring in your own imagery if you feel that the World Imagery Service isn't serving imagery that's high resolution enough for you to see for hedge up digitization. And so you can bring your own imagery file in to that. But this is very interesting because um, what Yakima and what others are doing uh, they're creating GIS. They may have some different things in their assets that they like that they don't have. So you can digitize these things in. And what's the big story is you can download these things. You can download the features that you digitize um, in a variety of GIS formats that, that are useful. Uh, CSV files, uh, file geodatabases, services, and so once you digitize and download these things, you can bring them into your assets, your GIS, and you can begin enriching these things. You can begin better attributing uh, these things. And so um, another very good way to share local geographic knowledge with us. Um, sharing data is likely, I would say, the best um, way to get complex um, and, and, and many authoritative features added to the base map, um, like an entire road center line or owner parcel coverage or uh, building footprints for an entire community, a city or a county or, or a region. Uh, this is a very good way to do that, sharing data. Um, you do need an ArcGIS Online account. It doesn't have to be an organizational account. It can be one of those freebies. Many organizations do that just to manage um, the community program, especially if there's folks within the organization who may not uh, have uh, password credentials for the org account. If you have multiple people who are going to be or multiple departments who are going to be contributing to the base maps, um, you'd want to create an area for them and a username, an OGS online username that could be uh, shared within your organization. So the people who are uh, wanting to contribute the, the, the great data that they're managing and, and, and revising, uh, they, can, they can go ahead and contribute that. Uh, we, use a, we use the uh, 
let's see here. Where is that? We use the we use a um, contributor application to register um, your organization. Okay, so I can show you an example of what that might look like. Let's see. There are some people here. Fayetteville. So here, this is what the account looks like for Fayetteville GIS. Um, you have an organization name, you have a citation name. Um, these are uh, commonly the same. I wanna make sure that we understand what this is. The organization name obviously would be the, the name of the local government, um, but the citation name is different. Some people wanna put their name and that's fine. And if, if Michael put his name, that would be fine, but no one knows who Michael is. You know, Michael's a GIS manager for the city of Fayetteville, but when people are using the dynamic attribution down here, they wanna see who is providing information for that requested tile. And they wanna see an authoritative data source. They wanna see the city of Fayetteville, Arkansas. So if you're registering for the program, you are, uh, we wanna be reflected in that data and that attribution um, appropriately. We'll go through some more of this stuff here in a few minutes. I wanted to talk about um, accepted layers that can be shared with us. Let's see here. That we'll go. We'll go over that a little bit later. So, um, get down here. What can you contribute? Oh. So community base maps, <clears throat> just one part of the overall program, okay? Your organization map layers are added to a suite of ready to use base maps in ArcGIS Online. And we're only incorporating the best available data sources to produce a, a wide variety of multi-scale online base maps that can serve as a foundation for the daily GIS work that you're doing. And additionally, as many of you may know, Esri's vector tiles offer a variety of styles that fit any audience or project. Users can also modify or create new styles using the Arc GIS, the Arc, uh, GIS vector uh, tile editor. So you, if you are not keen on some of the styles that are in the default uh, menu online, uh, you can manipulate and create uh, new styles from that. You can bring them into your organizational account and use those as your base map. Uh, we've got the uh, city of Newport News has done some of this stuff in Virginia. And um, it's just a very good way to sort of customize a look and feel uh, that, that reflects your community uh, the best. And the community imagery. So your organization can also enhance the imagery in ArcGIS Online by con contributing your recent submeter resolution imagery. Community imagery is using the best available data from both commercial and community sources to produce a comprehensive imagery layer of the world. So this is interesting. Um, this is Little Rock here. Um, and this is a, a, an image of service that will expose um, the current information about imagery for this tile. So uh, imagery that's being served in the Little Rock region of Arkansas is commercial. It's a uh, Maxar uh, product. You can see how old it is, you can get information. Uh, so what I'm driving at here is if you are an organization that is routinely capturing aerials, many of you are, um, you can go into this service and see what's being served currently. And if you have imagery that you feel would improve the World Imagery Service, we will host that at no cost, okay? That means you don't have to pay for it, it's free. And it's, it's great, a lot of people, um, Let's see here. I'll show you Ames. Ames, Iowa. 
So, um, and I'll, I'm gonna just open this up a little bit for better viewing. The city of Ames and the university uh, work together, um, much like you know, the University of Arkansas, I would say would work together with many of the communities, but they are sharing uh, some pretty stunning imagery here. And they're able to use this uh, throughout the community uh, for a variety of things. They could digitize off of this if they wanted to use a community editor app for, for, for things to bring in features or for operational uh, coverage, throwing operational layers over this. Um, you'll see here that this imagery is coming from a third party that aims is using and many of you will, will recognize this pictometry. Um, I think maybe they go by the name of Eagle View or maybe there's a similar company. Um, so um, I wanna talk about this for a moment and it's sort of an interesting situation. Uh, when I talk to people who have imagery and any one of you who are flying imagery are absolutely, no doubt, collecting uh, this photography at a much better resolution um, than we're able to serve from our commercial resources. And so, you know, it comes up a lot. You know, we have pictometry doing this and should we share this? Um, I'm not telling you to, you know, how, how to interpret your, your contract with third parties, but I think a lot of the third parties who are flying imagery for people, for organizations and local governments are, are maybe saying you can't distribute this content. And that's fair. But by sharing your imagery, you're not distributing the content. You're sharing. You're, it's a way that you're hosting. You can host it from your internal servers or you can host it on Esri's commercial uh, Amazon cloud-based services. There's really no difference. Um, the big difference, however, um, there is one big difference, I guess, is the IT and the infrastructure cost that you are and the labor that you are incurring by storing these, you know, high resolution, large file sizes internally on your servers. And so some people view this as a way to host that, to take off the IT infrastructure uh, strain, the labor strain, and have Esri host that content uh, for you, okay? So, and a lot of people are just doing it that way, and uh, they're able to better serve themselves as a, as a, as a organization who's, you know, managing content for a community, and they're better serving the community as well. And so um, I'm gonna put this in the chat window before we hop off. This is a public, this is a published uh, file that everyone can see. It's tailored for Arkansas and um, it's a useful resource for every one of you who might be considering contributing to the program. And so uh, maybe somebody can can help me remember that. Um, community addresses. Um, this is new. Um, we had the geocoding team approach us about two years ago and they're like, hey, you know, the community maps program is, is mature, it's successful, it's robust, it's, it's making a difference. And we feel that if we're able to um, bring in some of this local address data, we could really effectively uh, update the ArcGIS Online World Geocoder and make it a better search experience for everyone. So organizations, and, and the answer was yes. And we've, we've brought in maybe 17 million unique um, addresses, mainly from existing contributors who, who are keen to do more. Uh, so organizations can contribute point or polygon address data to enhance the, the geocoding experience for your users and everyone else. Um, community addresses provides the best available data to support the world geocoder. 
Um, the included addresses represent comprehensive and precise locations for many uh, countries who deliver um, the most accurate results. Many local governments and like organizations are beginning to leverage ArcGIS Online, the platform, to support their next nine, their next Gen 911. Okay, so if if if, if you're one of these people, um, you could consider sharing those point addresses with us, and they find it quite useful, especially uh, with incorporating new neighborhoods and subdivisions. They're going up fast, and these commercial vendors, you know, they're not able to keep up. Some of these neighborhoods are gated, so they can't be driven through. The, nothing can be collected. So this is a very good way for local governments to get their newer subdivisions that have been platted and are ready uh, into the base map very quickly. We also uh, have community land elevation and bathymetry. Um, organizations can enhance elevation layers as well in ArcGIS Online by contributing elevation, high, high resolution elevation or bathymetric data. Arkansas is probably not overly excited about bathymetric data, but a lot of coastal communities are. Um, so this land elevation and bathymetry is using the best available data sources to, to enhance the comprehensive word elevation layers and tools. And so these layers will enable you to do analysis and create 2D and 3D visualizations across the entire platform. And we have a similar service for this. Um, and you can zoom in um, to an area of interest and click on the map. And I think I'm in the right spot. I'll just click on the map here, say Little Rock. you can begin to understand what types of elevation data is available here. Now, for folks in the United States, um, I would caution you that we, we are, you know, you can determine what your elevation layers are and maybe you can improve these services. Um, the way we build this is we aggregate um, elevation and bathymetry from the USGS uh, from their three debt program. And many, many, not all of them, but a large, a large percentage of local governments are aggregating that data uh, to the USGS. And so we're able to go in at a, at a frequency uh, routinely and, and, and get that information and, and produce our, our, eleva our elevation products in that way. So maybe no need to, to double dip on the elevation. Um, but if you have something that exceeds what you're seeing here, um, we would love to have a conversation. So these are the accepted layers that we're supporting as a program. Um, many of you, you know, are managing these types of layers. I'm going to I'm going to bounce out here for a second, try to find a something I can interact with. Yes. So these are the accepted layers. You'll notice uh, addresses up here, base map, general things, referential stuff, land use, elevation, all the things we've talked about, imagery. And so all of these layers, with the exception of the point addresses and the imagery, are supported by service contributions. You do not have to run data prep tools on every one of these layers. If you have a service, um, that is a great way to go. And I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell you why in just a moment. So um, many of us define data differently. And so if you want to have a little bit of more understanding on what owner parcels are, we define that for you. And we'll give you the feature types and maybe some labeling opportunities, uh, building footprints, you can begin to interact with that and see how we define those. And we, we are supporting, we're beginning to support um, Z values. 
So, you know, we are moving into 3D uh, base maps. And so that's interesting. And uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about 3D base maps in the uh, months ahead uh, for sure. And probably we'll be demoing a, a 3D base map uh, as early as the, the user conference. Um, next year so this list provides a comprehensive overview of the base map data layers accepted by the program uh, contributed data will enrich the base maps across esri's platform and they're hosted on arcgs online for free as part of the living atlas of the world um, you can use this information which base map layers can be enriched through your efforts and you can click on these pop-ups you can see what the required uh, attribute details for labeling and symbology may be. You can prepare and then provide these authoritative layers to enrich the base map. Or uh, for select layers, you can just use the Community Maps Editor app to directly edit or add large features into the base map over your area of, of interest to in, improve um, the base maps. So data preparation has has modified greatly changed a lot over the years um, we do accept contributions of base map data in two formats as a service as i mentioned and also um, using a, a geo database okay uh, we have a group of um, tools data prep tools that sort of modify the schema of, of your map layers. And each layer that is to be contributed, uh, there's a tool for that layer specifically. Um, we began working with a lot of um, colleges and universities um, a couple of years ago. And we were all over the, you know, the Big Ten, all these schools that you would think would have these huge GIS programs. And we got to Michigan State University and they're like, hey, yes, we like the program. We were trying to sort of court them into the program. Um, they, they do a lot of great work. And they say, hey, you know, honestly, we've been looking at this program for a number of years and we love it and we see the value. But we don't have the bandwidth, nor do we want to run data prep tools. That's an extra step. So they said all of our services, all of our data, uh, rather, are supported by, by services. Can we just give you that and have you pull that data? And yes, was the answer. And so we added that entire workflow option for sharing uh, to, to our tools. And so organizations can simply set up a URL um, or share an item in the organizational account. And we will pull that every six months, for example. And so the data prep tools are great. They've been enhanced four times. We now have um, parameter tools that will save um, the work you did. So if you know, you're, you're a shop that's contributing once a year, that's your frequency. Um, that's not too often, you know, that's not a daily task that you get accustomed to doing. So the parameter file is helpful and looking at how you attributed that data and the geoprocessing step. So you can quickly line that up again for an update. A lot of people leave, they move on, they retire, they go to work for a different organization. This new person, it's going to want that parameter file because they have no idea how you set it up. They may have an idea how they would do it, but the parameter file is what I like to call the data cheat sheet. How was this done? How can I do this quickly and move on? Because community maps is not your day job. You know, it's ours. And so we want to make this, we want to enable as many people as possible. But the services, no doubt, have become super popular. I'm going to show you how that how that goes here. I got lots of stuff open here. Close a few things, and 
Yes, here we go. So I think this is it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna borrow a building footprint service from Salt Lake County, Utah. And I'm going to, um, so just as a side note, if you're a registered user with us, um, this is what your account looks like exactly, minus the admin tab. This is under the hood stuff for our team only. But as you can see, you have an account, you can pull these layers down, you can make decisions on what you want to register with us. Um, the intended use is to click on these boxes for layers, uh, referential layers or raster layers that you intend to um, share with us. Many organizations will click everything, which is fine, but they'll give us building footprints and neighborhoods. Okay, maybe they intend on working uh, on other layers as time goes on, but it's kind of nice for these layers to match up with what you're actually contributing to the base map routinely. And you can click these on and off as much as you like and um, make changes, okay? Um, as you can see, your citation, your point of contact information is all here. This is your self-service portal. Uh, you can make changes to anything. This is also where you would submit content to our team. And I want to show you how you might do that um, with respect to uh, a service. I'm not going to do a demonstration on the data prep tools with respect to timeframes, but the services are that easy. So you'll see these layers, these layers represent the checked boxes that we were just viewing. And you'll see here, <clears throat> excuse me, that you have a couple formats. Um, maybe you're a shop that doesn't have services for everything. Maybe you have building footprints as a service. Maybe you, you don't. Maybe you have local parks as a, as a service. Maybe you don't. But my point is you can share a combination of services and a file geo database uh, with us. And you can do that um, in one submission and serving both of those up to us. So how you might register a service would be pretty simple. You would uh, collect, well, you just hit service there and you'll see a pop-up window. And you have a couple choices here, folks. You can give us a public facing uh, service uh, in your on your AOL, your AGLE account, you can see here, I'm signed in. You can see some of these things are public facing, these green uh, globes, and some of these are, are private. Um, so you can share an item as a, as a service like that, or you can, what many are doing, honestly, are just giving us uh, rest points, URLs. And so if you paste a service here and click OK, if the service is valid, it'll give you a nice little checkbox here. It'll also recognize that these are building footprints. And then you can um, pick a frequency and you can begin attributing that data right here. Uh, this is a, a portal inside you know, for your data. And so if you have this layer, this uh, URL registered here, you could begin um, symbolizing your buildings by use or by type. Um, you can keep this selected, which will simply render all of the building footprints, whether they're an office building or a home, um, and just a, a general category, a, a light gray category. And I think that's really all you need. Um, there are some organizations that want to bust out their symbology for every building in the community. And as a cartographer, it becomes really aesthetically hard to, to look at. So um, some, it's important to some, and I'm not discouraging that, but when you begin overlaying your operational content to these colorful buildings, it becomes difficult to look at, it becomes difficult to, to sort of determine what's going on. So clicking this, keeping this on will retain that general category and you can move on. 
You can also um, view the selection that you've lined up with us uh, in this window here. And there are an awful lot of buildings in Salt Lake County. These are actually, well, that's fast. That's fast. So you can see uh, the, the selection queries that you've done here. You can zoom in and, and make sure that they came across okay. And uh, that you're gonna be pretty happy with with the content rendering. <clears throat> um, we do not publish any um, content from our contributors until uh, they have reviewed a preliminary cache, okay? The preliminary cache review. So the point of contact for that account will be able to um, look at the, the base map content they've provided us uh, in the cartographic representations uh, for the base map. And it's a very good uh, last kind of QA effort uh, to make sure that uh, your buildings and your assets are labeled properly. There's nothing missing. Uh, the geometries look good and everything looks nice the way you intended. Uh, once you, know, you give the thumbs up, uh, we'll go ahead and publish. We are a vector shop now. Uh, outside of elevation layers and, and rest and, and imagery, these base maps are vector tiles. And the nice thing about vector tiles for us and for you is that we are able to update base map content every three weeks, okay? 2010, 11, it took months, it was painful. <laughs> All you folks are working hard to, to share content with us and we, we make you wait a long time and it's not fair. We've we refined our process so well over the years there's almost no bar it's it's so low you can step right into this program today and be successful yeah so we talked about registering your organization using these this app here um, filling out the point of contact um, we allow one agle username per account it's important to realize going back to that scenario where many departments and folks within an organization may want to um, interact with, with the content and share, um, make sure that Angle username is gonna support them. And then we have here um, a nice map of our contributors worldwide. I'll go on to the Arkansas region here. Some of these folks are contributing, um, sharing data. Some of these folks are using the editor app. Um, City of Conway GIS is contributing. We have um, the state GIS office. We have the county of Pulaski, longtime folks. Uh, Jonesboro High School, they digitized this. It says editor app. So you're able to understand how this content got in. Um, you know, we, we talk about open data and I know we're getting close to time here. We're, we talk about open data, we talk about sharing. Um, you know, there's people out there who really need to be served. And yeah, I worked for local government in the 90s and we used to sell data. And that's fine, but we're in a contemporary society these days. Um, information is fast. And so organizations, this is my opinion, but organizations that are not, you know, if they're managing the types of content we saw today, imagery, referential base map content. Organizations around the world, local government or not, who are not making this data widely available are not serving. And, you know, there's people like, um, I don't know, let's see here. Like, like, like David Criswell. He's up in Northwest Arkansas. He's building trails. These people want to ride trails. 
these people want to get outside and understand what type of assets they can enjoy. And so, you know, David struggles. He's just one example, but David struggles on creating useful information products because he's not, he doesn't have access to, um, you know, a base map being um, updated by a local government in the region. Or maybe he's interested in digitizing trails. Um, you'll see in the base maps and the imagery, there's differences. The imagery is usually much more contemporary. There's things that are going on. And this person and other trail managers and asset managers all over the country need to be served better. And, you know, our jobs as local government people, you know, might, might be a part of that process. And so I only bring this up because I, I feel that um, the data that you are managing is important and is useful not only to accomplish your tasks as a GIS manager or, or an a, a analyst, but as you know, serving this information to a, a broader community um, where everyone benefits. Uh, you know, the local government benefits, people have access to good information, uh, map galleries and web applications, um, open data portals. You know, these are the types of things that serve communities in, in a very good way. And information products are important. Uh, you want people to not misuse trails or misuse community assets, um, make it known, make it available. Um, these applications don't have to expose the data, but they can expose the information that people need to uh, recreate or make decisions on um, just about anything they do. Um, so, Anyway, and I've talked with, you know, many folks, um, Christina Scarlett, uh, I've talked with Brian Culpepper a lot about it. We, we would just like to see a, a more comprehensive, open concept all over, all over the world. And it serves everyone. And so I'm going to wrap it right here um, and take some questions. And I hope that this was useful. Um, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to place it into the chat window. Do I have access to that? Yes. So everything we've talked about today um, is, is in here. I just put that in the chat window. Great resource for you to bookmark um, these, some of these links will go like for the different community areas, imagery, base map stuff. Uh, these links under those images will take you to a more deeper dive into that category, make you uh, help you understand, uh, help you discover uh, content specs and requirements surrounding any of the map layers that you wish to, uh, to share with us. Um, Chad, was that okay for you guys? Thank you, Shane. Absolutely excellent presentation. Uh, highly, highly informative and educational. Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> sincerely appreciate it. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll open things up for questions. Uh, any of our panelists who would uh, like any interaction uh, with Shane, now is your opportunity. Uh, to all our attendees, feel free to use uh, the Q and A option. Uh, even use the chat option as well. Uh, or, of course, uh, you can use that raise your hand function if you would like to, to jump in and join the conversation. Uh, we can advance you uh, to, uh, to a panelist as well. Uh, I'd like to point out one thing uh, quickly, Shane, is that uh, your link that you shared with us just went to the hosts and the panelists and not to everyone else. Okay. How do I make it broadly available? Ooh, that's a little drop down menu in the chat. So sorry. Yeah, I can, uh, I'm going to reshare it for you. Shane. Yeah, okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's that's good information. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, this is information for everyone. And so I know that um, the way you guys set this up is um, a little, a little, maybe a little bit different, but um, we are different. That's for sure. 
<laughs> no, I, I think it's great. This information is for everyone. So if you can, or if you have the ability to make that available, um, it would be helpful to uh, folks on the call who may want to dig in on their time and have a look. Uh, Shane, I want to thank you again for sharing this with us and to provide a little bit of backstory that, you know, you and I and Christina met back earlier this year, actually, in chatting with uh, our local trails coordinator for Trails Bla Trailblazers. And that's kind of how this kind of got started as an idea. I thought it was a great program. That's right. I am glad right. you covered the details that I wasn't aware of because this program, as I know, has changed a lot. And, and it appears to me that you guys are making it even easier uh, and less impactful for our GIS community to, to participate and to share the data, which is all, fortunately in this state, that's what we're about. We're not about selling the data. And um, when you mentioned that earlier, that in the 90s, we sold data from our local governments. I know half of us, and particularly Shelby Johnson, kind of cringed because <laughs> we've been fighting against that and trying to be as open as possible since day one. Yeah. And I think this is going to help us all, I hope. Um, I would think so. We used to share data in Western North Carolina. I worked for a four county area. And there's no doubt that it is a, you know, interesting revenue stream. But, you know, there's only so many people who are keen on owner parcels. How far is that going to go? There's more creative ways to generate revenue. And um, this day and age, I just don't see the advantage of, of you know, locking up the information that people desire. Yeah. It's an economic engine. I mean, the trails example is a prime one for, for our region. Um, and making sure that we share all that freely and publicly. And those of us that kind of know what we're doing, or at least we think we do, uh, with regards to mapping, uh, we, we hold the keys to sharing the best available data. So I was... I was not aware of all the folks that are lurking and participating within the community maps program in our own state, but I'm proud to see that. My first example ha happened to be this county, uh, Pulaski County, basically. Right. Yeah. Those guys were do have been doing this for a while. It's old hat, but it was impressive. And I recognized that back, and I believe it was our GIS conference we had in Little Rock four or five years ago, it must have been. By That's now. right. Yeah. So they set up services. They've, they've done the work. If they, you know, you can just find the time to set up the services. Um, we'll let you know when we're about to pull your, your stuff. We'll send you an automated email. Say, like, Hey, we're going to pull your building fr footprints and parks and we make sure your service is ready. Um, I appreciate your comments about uh, enabling and making it easier. When I first stepped into the program, from National Geographic, and I was making maps for them for 12 years. And when they showed me the workflow, I'm like, man, this is this is tough. This is asking a lot of our contributors. If you're going to get any to run schema changes, we used to require everything being local government information model. We used to require you do this. We used to require you do that. You'd have to give us all of the layers, not just buildings. Now you can give us whatever you want whenever you want um, through a, a service. The service is popular because it greatly reduces the need to modify your schema. And it's just setting it up. And so I appreciate that comment. And there's a lot more that we could do to enable, better enable folks, but coming from a you know thousand degree view of, of what I've seen over the years, um, all these changes have come from user comments, focus groups, how can we serve you? And this, these are the things we hear. And these are the things that we incorporate into the, the sharing workflows for everyone. So uh, it looks like uh, Michael has joined the conversation. Michael, are you, uh, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, so yeah, we had, um, as you saw recently started being a contributor um we've the, the one of the things that spurred us so we actually largely use our own and make our own base maps but uh we're finding that uh 
enterprise applications like third party are increasingly using the Esri maps. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to figure out how we can get our data best into there. And we, yeah, we really appreciate the service option, which we've, we're currently, I believe in the process of it being, you know, it had been approved and then I had approved it. And I think we're just waiting for the caches to update or whatever now. That's right. Take a look um, at this. This is City of Fayetteville. Look at all these services you guys have set up. Yeah, and that was, every, I mean, every yeah. six months we go and get it, and we update the base map. I mean, Michael, thank you. I mean, this yeah. is oh, yeah. um, happy to happy to share. Yeah, and so you know, things come up like if you have a building that you're demolished, or you have a new building, you know, you can edit this. You can go in and edit the pull date. Maybe you want to wait another six months because you don't want to have the base map reflecting something different. You can, it's, it's pretty flexible. You can change the, the pool dates for any of these unique layers. But you guys are like, like crazy good. Look at no, this. No, he, listen, yeah. this guy's a rock star. The whole <laughs> staff at City of Fable is, I'm glad you're showing this detail because this gives us, me, a better understanding of kind of what's required, but the fact that they're all running a server, they've got all this data, and by the way, their base maps, second to none. Mm. Um, I'm glad to see them participating. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I wish everyone would, we need to duplicate Mike, Michael, and <laughs> put him in uh, shops across the, the country. It's, it's just, a, just a great way. <laughs> Just a great way to uh, participate, and this is, um, you know, uh, you know, a poster child for the for the program, if you will, here, right here. Yeah, and then um, so one other thing, you know, we are still trying to figure out. So as you, I know, I heard you mention at the start the partnership with Tier Maps, right? And the source of all this is we started getting, um, we have like a citizen uh whatever you call it requesting application called like c click fix you know where that'll um you know citizens will report problems and then it'll you know bring it to the and what and then they started reporting map problems they're saying hey in the map the street name is wrong mm -hmm. so in following that path i was like okay well it sounds like here maps is the source of the data so i'd actually been working with them you should and is that I was wondering if that's the best approach. We we actually they have a very similar thing where we were able to wire up a REST service yeah. with them. And yeah. I was wondering if that's the better way or if the better way would be the what you showed at the start, which was also you know, the um uh, I forget what you call it, the report a problem, you know. Yeah, option. yeah. So yeah, I mean certainly um like the city of Newport News are as active as as, as you guys with with all all sharing uh, profiles. They they do it all. Um, they also give their information to here, and that's helpful. Um, I wouldn't say giving it to here and not giving it to us is the best approach. I would do both. Okay. Um, here's something interesting. In your in, when you're in your account, you can click this, and you cannot click it. You can opt in you can opt out this is an option for it's under a creative common license and if you want esri our our community maps team to share your content with other with our partners you can do that and so um that is a very good way to distribute uh, your data to broaden the audience of your data. And okay. so um, Apple, uh, Bing, here, uh, OpenStreetMap are our people that we, we partner with. Um, now, by clicking that, where is that? I got a lot of windows open here, folks. By clicking that, um, that doesn't require our partnering organization to do anything um they may they may not want to incorporate and enter their data and so that's why i mentioned you should do both here is a great organization um their data is great um when they get to more rural areas not so great right i mean that's how commercial data is always has been 
That's why the community maps program is so important. It fills in the gaps. These communities um, need to be represented appropriately. Here, fall short on place names. They fall short on other type of you know, information where they're really good and where they've improved a great deal are roads. And it's because that's their entire business model. Roads, you know, they're owned by NAV companies, BMW, Mercedes, you know. So their in-car NAV is of a key business component. Um, place names, things that are important to you folks, probably not so important. So that's why I encourage doing it with 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 the both of us. We we've and in, we've increased our update frequency with here um, each month. It used to be once a year, and it was every quarter. Now it's every month. We get deltas that we have to rectify and and sort of get into the map um, along with our community uh, content. And some sometimes some of this is commingled, but uh, you know. It's, it's good to have the option to share. And if you're sharing with here, that's great. Um, you, sh you should do that. Uh, they'll begin to understand the value um, when more and more and more people come to them and say, hey, you know, we have these assets. We want to show. Sounds good. Okay, good to know. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your, for your questions and feedback. And thank you again, Shane, for your presentation today. Um, I have just a couple of more things to cover for everyone. So continuing our theme of this year or this season's Arkansas GIS Users Forum Educational Webinar Series plus training, uh, it is my pleasure to make an announcement today that our next event will actually be an introduction to ArcGIS Pro class coming up on October 24th and 25th. This course introduces participants to the ArcGIS Pro software. The class begins with the basics of navigating the map and walks through the process of creating maps, optimizing the display of the data, and performing spatial analysis. At the completion of this course, those attending should have a strong foundation in the basic use of ArcGIS Pro and have an understanding of the strengths of performing spatial analysis with a GIS. To follow our news and stay up to date, we would recommend everyone, if you have not already, visit argisusers.org slash join and become a member of the User Forum website. Also, today's presentation, along with all of our previous presentations, are available on the Users Forum YouTube page. To get to that page, please visit argisusers.org slash YouTube. Once again, we'd like to thank all of our participants today and thank you again, Shane, for your time and presentation. We'd like to wish everyone a great rest of the day.